Hi, today I'll be talking about phylogenetic trees and will form a hypothetical tree using phones. Phylogenetic trees are visual representations of lineage between operational taxonomic units, or OTUs. I'll be forming a rooted tree as rooted trees are able to show the distance between each OTU. It is a way of showing anagenesis and common ancestry. I'll start by going over some vocabulary. Anagenesis is the evolution within a lineage over time. Last common ancestor refers to the most recent OTU that a set of OTUs is descended from. To find the most common ancestor between a set of OTUs, one can follow the branches of the phylogenetic tree to a common internal node. An internal node refers to the spot in a phylogenetic tree where one branch splits off into two. This is the visual representation of cladogenesis, which increases diversity. The outgroup is the OTU that diverged earlier than the other OTUs, and it acts as a root for the tree, as it is the most common ancestor of all the OTUs in the tree. As we are looking at phones today, our outgroup will be the string phone, as it is a clear common ancestor of all other phones. Keep in mind that this scenario is hypothetical, and the details are simplified to get the idea across more than the semantics. For our OTUs today, we have the rotary landline, the button landline, the phone booth, the cordless phone, the camera phone, the flip phone, which was the very first phone I personally owned, the texting phone, and finally, the smartphone, which is seen everywhere today. Just like in nature, as these phones developed, some features were more popular. There were hybrids between each, some features showed up, then left, they came back again. The next two slides show a simplified chart of their differences, similar to how a DNA sequence alignment would be used to make phylogenetic trees for real organisms. If interested, I've put a link in the slide and in the description box of this video. Now to form a tree for these phones, you have to account for their differences to truly represent their lineage. Though technology doesn't evolve quite like nature, you can grasp the idea. First, this ring phone. Though it could carry sound, a huge leap was needed to develop a functioning phone we think of today. The horizontal line connecting it to the rest of the trees is by far the longest, as the rotary landline needed much more complex technology to function. For the button landline to develop, not much was needed. Simply faster dialing, which is why it is represented with the shortest horizontal line. Next, the phone booth, which allowed public access and increased mobility, which is represented by a moderate length line. Developing a cordless phone was not far off once the phone booth became popular. It had the same functionality, but had a new technology allowing it to function. From cordless phone to camera phone, a longer line was used to show that screens were added, cameras were incorporated, and the functionality of the phone was changing. People then wanted phones to be smaller, and the phone became more compact with the flip phone, though not much else changed. Texting then became popular, and buttons were added for each letter with the texting phones. Phones were able to access the cloud, have video calls, play complex apps, and the uses of the phones were changed forever with the smartphone. The tree shows that some phones had many more differences separating them than others, but all of them had a common ancestor in the string phone. The internal nodes are shown in the purple circles, and you can see where cladogenesis occurs, and as you move left to right, anagenesis shows the evolution over time.